We're excited to announce January's blogs, and I love the topic. It's something we really don't talk much about, but vulva grooming and how we groom our vulva and our story of how we came through our journey. Because I think, you know, we hit puberty, we start to get pubic hair, no one mentions everything, and there is a pressure to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. This topic was was so well received by our bloggers and we even got some new bloggers that that haven't written anything before um every single piece of writing is just brilliant um i can't wait for our followers to read these we'll start off with someone that contributed something for the first time lisa um who was the second body sex facilitator certified um, way back long ago, she took a break for a while. Now she's back. Um, and here's a quote from her writing. I spent 30 years worrying about removing something I didn't actually have, only to really, really want it when I discovered the truth of my genetics. She is blonde with very mm -hmm. fair skin. And I love the story of how she was giving birth and she was worried that she was like super hairy and she talks about getting on the table and she's all like a penguin because she's so large. And the moment the nurse is going to see her vulva hair and her nurse is like, oh, we don't even have to shave you. And she yeah. thought it was going to be like a jungle down there. And I love that, that, you know, that emotion Mm -hmm. of fearing something and then saying, oh, I wish I kind of had it. And Lisa is such an engaging writer. You are like right there. I felt like I was right there with her in, in the delivery room. <laughs> um, and, and she brings up a moment that we've all had when someone else looks at our genitals and we're not sure what they're going to find. We're feeling a bit insecure about it. She's so. just, I'm so glad she's come full circle. Um, I remember her workshop and I just remember Betty looking at her and saying, what a handsome woman. Yes. Instantly yeah. impressed. And so here she is, one of our leaders um, blogging. And I, I have to say, as I was reading these blogs to pick out the one-liners, I just felt like I was going back home because this is what Betty and I did together for mm -hmm. 10 years. So we're just so happy now to be back on track. Uh, another one that we have is from Wendy, who's also a first timer. She recorded hers in an audio version. It's only about five minutes long, but hers is incredible. She's an amazing storyteller. And when you listen to her voice, I was just immediately engaged. I wanted more. Yes, <laughs> I right? Like, I want more of the Wendy show. <laughs> right? Exactly. So her quote that we loved is, I love the skin that I live in and most certainly now have a love relationship with the fur that grows on it. So she talks about from when she first started to get pubic hair. Um, and I don't want to spoil the story, but, you know, and then she goes full circle to where she is now. Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, so many parts of it, there were so many images and just the way she speaks um, is incredible. Our next person is Esther, and she's one of our stars in Europe. Um, she writes for Glamour magazine in Hungary. Uh, and uh, her quote is, my vulva hair was a pleasant feeling for me. You could play with it, caress it, and poke around in it, as if you were touching a small furry animal. And the movement of the hair during intercourse was also good. You know, Esther started as a client during COVID lockdown and we mm -hmm. did virtual work together mm -hmm. and she's so talented and it's true. You know, you can pet your vulva and mm -hmm. the hair holds pheromones and there is something about how it's kind of tugged on during partner sex. And I just love that sentiment and that mm -hmm. visual. Um, yeah. Right. The, the, a little furry animal. <laughs> it's, it's pleasant. Right. It is. And she talks about the journey of her pubic hair with partners um, and, and how that kind of shaped where she is today. And just just a fascinating read. And on her blog, it's in Hungarian. So we have it in English on bodysex.com. But if you want to actually read it in Hungarian, we've got a link to her blog so you can do that. 
Our next is another one of our up and coming European leaders, Marta, uh, mm. and she's in Amsterdam. She wrote, I find pubic hair to be sexy and having it makes me feel more beautiful. I occasionally, I enjoy occasionally playing with it and massaging it with coconut oil, enhancing my aroma. My sexual scent embodies the essence of my sexuality and defines the woman I am. And that's true. Your hair holds your scent. Mm -hmm. Betty loved taking her hands before she went to sleep. She would always put her hands down, kind of move a massage into the vulva, get the hair. And then and she would always say, Carla, and I just love my scent. I mean, mm -hmm. it is the animal part of ourselves. Um, and Marta was at the last retreat assisting. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a, a wonderful addition to the body sex community. Um, and I love that notion. Like we all have to learn to love our pubic hair. Lakota's. Oh my gosh. Lakota is a mom. And so the focus of her pubic hair, she actually has two separate blog posts and they're linked together. If you read one, there's a link to the other one. Um, but she talks about her own trauma as a teenager with when she discovered that she had pubic hair. And then her daughter at the same age as she was told her mom, told Lakota that she had pubic hair and how Lakota handled it as a mom. Oh my gosh, just, just incredible. What a great way to handle uh, puberty with a child. And that's what we do as mothers. We can heal our own wounds by doing something different with our children, by taking that trauma and not repeating it, saying, I'm going to break that cycle. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give my child everything that I didn't get. Yes, yes. So here's Lakota's quote. I don't know if it will be a huge moment for my daughter, but it was monumental for me. I dodged some major trauma for her by facing my own fears around pubic hair and stepped beyond my trauma. I wasn't only mothering my daughter through this moment, but also my inner child. I just got tingles. I know. Me really, too. I just, just kind of went like this. <laughs> <sighs> and then there's Tosh. Tosh is one of our rock stars. Um, she talks about her whole relationship with with body hair and kind of the war she raged against it, and then just kind of gave up. Um, and her quote is: "Body hair repeatedly enhanced my pleasure." So in an instant, I realized that body hair's intention was to be my friend, not foe. Isn't it wonderful when we can shift the battle over our bodies and say, I'm not going to be at war about anything anymore. I'm just going to accept it and move into it and have pleasure from it. Mm -hmm. And we have Emily, who's written another fantastic piece again. Uh, and she talks, I love how she opens it up. <laughs> <laughs> and you just kind of think, where is she going with this and pubic hair? <laughs> but she's another great storyteller. And she can weave in the acceptance of hair, um, your own pubic hair and other people's pubic hair during sex. So her quote is, the feeling of agency and permission that it's okay to have juicy labia and a hair adorned pussy is a bright contrast to my old life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's true. I think as women, we have two lives. We have the life that when we're kind of insecure and we don't know who we are and we're denying our femininity and we're denying everything that makes us a powerful woman, because that's what our orgasm and sexuality and pleasure and body hair and all of these things are, right? Our bodies are 200 million years of evolution. And the only reason mm -hmm. why the human race is here is because of these bodies. So yes. when we can shift that, and there's always a moment for us when we can shift and you're witnessing Emily's shift. Mm -hmm. And I have that visual of her pulling pubic hair out of her, her mouth. <laughs> right? <laughs> that, that so like, we've all been there where you're like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and she gives such practical mm -hmm. advice to her younger self, um, you know, which, yes, it, it, I think each one of our blog posts, I cannot pick a favorite. I love no. them all no. for different reasons. They, they are all wonderful pieces this month. 
So we hope you enjoy them. And next month for Valentine's Day, we're going to do blog entries about um, self-love and how we made that connection and a moment of self-love. Yes.